Hey guys, I'm Tim with Bleepin' Jeep. In today's how-to, we'll be replacing my junk factory XJ steering with a kit from Rough Stuff Specialties. This is a Y-Link kit. It uses GM one-ton rod ends and one and a half inch OD quarter inch wall DOM tubing. This stuff is absolutely stout and I can't wait to get it on my Jeep. So the factory steering we have here is all going to be replaced with that kit. The rod ends are extremely flimsy. This tie rod is almost the same size as my index finger. It's just not quite suitable for uh, taking abuse off-road, but the kit from Rough Stuff will certainly take care of that. What I'm thinking of doing is I'm gonna to try to run the steering kit on top of my knuckle on both sides instead of the bottom. And some issues I see here, we may have clearance problems with the uh, sway bar mounts right here. Uh, those might have to be cut off, we'll see. To gain access to this bolt right here to finish taking off your steering stabilizer, you may have to turn all of your linkage driver uh, in order to get to it. As you can see, now we have easy access to that bolt. Alright, so the stock steering components are out of the way and the new tie rod is going to go from the knuckle right here to the one that you can see closer to you in frame. And most people will run this kit on the bottom side of the knuckles. I'm hoping to get it on top and we're trying to clear the uh, sway bar connects here and if necessary we'll cut them out of the way. But the way that we're going to attempt to avoid hitting them is we're going to bend the tie rod. This is a tie rod also from Rough Stuff off of a different Jeep. And we know we have it upside down, we're just uh, showing where it's going to be. And as you can see, as it moves, it contacts that sway bar bracket right there. And then the same deal on this side. And just barely, we get almost to the steering stop, but it hits right there. So we're going to move our bends out closer to the end and a few more degrees. And hopefully we can clear these brackets without modifying them. So from Rough Stuff Specialties in this Y-Link kit, you get two 54-inch pieces of DOM, which for a Cherokee or any other vehicle is plenty. It's uh, too much material. And this is a builder kit, uh, meaning you can, it, the intention of this kit is to modify it um, to your needs. And that's what we're doing here. Um, as I explained that last one, we're about to bend it on this hydraulic tube bender. So right now we're gonna open this up and figure out uh, where we need to bend it. After I sharpen my knife, we'll figure out where we need to bend it um, in order to clear the uh, bracketry that's in the way right now. Okay, so we've bent our tie rod. Um, in this particular case, we bent each side about 12 degrees plus spring back, so it's probably more like 10. We haven't actually checked it. We just knew that we needed to bend it a little more than this one uh, in order to get it to fit. So based on your circumstances and axle uh, selection, your mileage may vary. Um, right now we're just holding this up and mocking it, making sure that it looks like everything's gonna clear, and right now it does. So we're gonna proceed to trim the ends off of this, weld our bugs in, and then attach our rod ends. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is ream your knuckles out there's two different ways to do this. One way is to use a specific reamer with the GM taper to bore your hole that's shaped like this. Another option, which is what I'm doing here today, is to use a 7 8 a non-tapered reamer. This, this reamer does have a taper to it, but at the end it's 7 8 all the way through, which is gonna give us a straight hole. And then Rough Stuff sells these sleeves that don't have any taper on the OD, but the inside has that specific GM taper milled into it. And then we just need to drop that into our hole and our um, tie rod end will fit perfectly. Okay. 
as soon as you have your 7 8 hole bored through your knuckle, you can drop your GM tapered insert right into place. One other thing, if you do this, you're also not limited to over the knuckle or under the knuckle in case you have clearance issues or you can't bend your tie rod like we're doing here. If you just drill, if you go with this option, you just drill a straight 7 8 hole. You can go on top as well as on the bottom, no problem. By the way, a reamer like this one uh, can be had for pretty cheap. This thing is made in the USA and I bought it for $1. All right, the next thing we're gonna do now that we have our knuckles bored out, our sleeves inserted, we're gonna get our tie rod ends inserted, locked in and bolted down. That way we can start taking hard measurements for our tie rod where it needs to be cut to be the proper width. All right, so once you get your tie rod end in place, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to put on is a jam nut. The driver's side is a right-hand thread. The passenger side is a left-hand thread. Go ahead and get this all the way down, just about as far as it'll go. Okay, once you have that in place, your weld-in bung will thread in, and we wanna run this until we're about one inch from the meat of your uh, tie rod end approximately to where this part begins. Okay, once you have your tie rod ends in, we're holding everything into place and just getting an idea of where we can uh, cut the excess off. And then these weld-in bungs that thread onto your tie rod end, they will insert inside of your DOM. Once we get that mocked up, we can tack them in place and then weld them solid. So when we were holding this up, this is what we were determining. This is the weld-in bung that we threaded leaving one inch to the um, tie rod end that's in the knuckle now. And I marked where this excess will be cut off and this is where we bent it, about 10 degrees or so. If we had this any closer to the bend, this would not be able to insert into the DOM because the bend won't allow it. So I made this, I brought this out as far as I could while leaving us enough adjustability and that'll leave me about one inch before the bend to the end of the weld and bunk. So that should work just fine. Okay, so we've got both sides cut now. We are inserting it into our weld bungs. God willing. Oh yeah. And we'll do the same over here. Perfect something like that. And then we can get this situated and check our clearances. Make sure we're not hitting anything. We might have to rock it back and forth a little bit. We are contacting the bolt over here just a hair for the steering stabilizer. We kind of anticipated that. So if we just rock the tie rod down and because of these bends that we put in it, uh, we should be able to clear it just fine. With these welded bungs, it's a good idea to situate them uh, flat. Don't cut your hand open like I just did. Situate them flat like this because when you do your toe adjustment, it's a lot easier to get a wrench on here if you're not fighting the angle. Also, when you take this off to weld it on the table, you'll be able to keep your entire piece flat if you tack these in position nice and even. Okay, so we had to bend our tie rod at two spots here to gain us a little bit more clearance around some of the components on the axle. If we had a straight tie rod, or had we done this under knuckle allowing a straight tie rod, our toe adjustments would be very simple just by traditionally spinning your tie rod. Uh, that's, that's the normal way that you adjust your toe. You can use a, a pipe wrench on here. Um, in this case, to get toe adjustments, we'll actually have to take one rod out of the knuckle and spin the whole tie rod end in and out to get that toe set right. Not that big of a deal. Uh, it's just a trade-off that we had to choose uh, due to this particular setup. Once you have your nut off, true to form, my Pitman arm is ridiculously stuck on there. These little pullers, um, they can be had from Harbor Freight. I'd recommend a, a higher quality retailer. Also, you can rent these from a lot of parts stores. And then you just tighten this puppy down. Once you get oh, yeah, a ton of pressure on this thing, take a BFG, you start whacking that Pitman arm and it breaks it loose and the whole thing starts dropping down. If you don't have one of these fancy pullers, uh, Matt has a video on how to remove this, I believe, using heat. Which is 
I think he uses a torch and heats the whole thing up and pries it off. So check that out. Rough Stuff has a few different options to use sleeves. They make an insert sleeve with a taper similar to that that we used in the knuckles uh, that requires you to drill your pitman arm out to one inch. I'm not going to be doing that today. I'm just using this uh, reamer and I'll be uh, going in maybe halfway and then checking it with this uh, rod in here and making sure that everything's honky dory. All right, let's get to it. Okay, we're at 0.75, and that lands us, and that lands us right there on this guy. So I'm good with that. Now that we know we have adequate clearance with our tie rod, we'll set our weld-in bungs to a nice flat position like we discussed earlier. Then we'll begin by tacking probably four tacks on each one of these, and then we can remove the tie rod, and we'll weld these solid on the bench. Once you have your weld bungs in place and welded, I uh, cool them down real quick with a faucet. Then you can go ahead and begin threading your tie rod ends back into your tie rod. With your tie rod all welded up and put back in place, we can move on to the drag link. The next thing you're going to want to do is install your pitman arm after you've reamed it out. This is the lower end of our drag link. We're just going to insert the weld in bung side like that. And you can see the bend in the drag link. We ended up putting in uh, approximately a 12 degree bend to clear our clearance bend here in the tie rod. And that is gonna give us just enough room to clear everything. So insert your bottom side of the drag link there. Once you have the bottom side of your drag link inserted, you're gonna to wanna to have your pitman arm, your steering wheel, and your knuckles all turned to full lock one way or the other. That way you have an accurate measurement when you hold your drag link up showing you where to mark it to cut. Alright, we have cut our drag link, everything fits, we've steered everything lock to lock, and we have very minimal clearances right here. Thanks to our bend, we're able to gain about 8th inch to 3 16th of clearance, just enough. And now we're ready to take our drag link off, weld it solid on the bench, and reinstall everything. Then we can begin setting our toe, which is the alignment. Okay, we have the tires back on. We're doing that for approximate alignment purposes. We'll just be pulling measurements off the front of the tire and the back of the tires, making them um, just barely towed in, about a sixteenth or so. Uh, Matt has a good video on do-it-yourself alignment, so if you aren't familiar with that, check that video out. Right now, I'm just installing the boot on the uh, tie rod end of the drag link here. We'll get this in place, and then we'll go from there. Now that the drag link is welded up, we're ready to install it. Go through everything, make sure everything's tightened to spec, and you can finish installing all your zerks into the fittings where they go. Also, don't forget to install your cotter pins. Go ahead and tighten everything down to spec. Rough stuff also includes zerk fittings and cotter pins with this Y-Link kit. The next step with your steering upgrade would be to install the steering stabilizer like this one. Rough Stuff Specialties offers a bolt-on bracket in several different configurations. They also have tabs for anything you can imagine. And I'll be welding my steering stabilizer tabs on. That'll be a second video. In that video, we'll also cover how to measure the throw of your stabilizer, which will dictate where your tabs will be welded to your steering component. Now keep in mind, this Y-Link kit from Rough Stuff is a builder's kit, meaning you can configure it and modify it to fit your needs. 
If you're doing an under the knuckle installation, it's gonna be way more straightforward than what we went through here. You won't have to bend anything in most cases. All your components will be straight. I chose to go over the knuckle, which will raise everything up a little bit higher, but because of that, we had a lot more variables to deal with. All right, guys, be sure to check out the links in the description to that kit from Rough Stuff Specialties as well as Bleepin' Jeep. And if you aren't already a subscriber, we would really appreciate it if you subscribe and thumbs up our videos. It helps us a lot. Also, a huge thanks goes out to Rough Stuff Specialties as well as my friends from Rock and Road Performance for letting me use their facility. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.